Hi, I'm Father Joel, and Merry Christmas from Pilgrim Priest. I'm grateful to everyone who was able to come to Mass in person and we could celebrate the birth of the Lord together. But I'm also grateful to everyone who was able to tune in remotely and to you for listening to the preaching podcast. I pray that Jesus will come to live in your heart. God bless you. The world we see around us was created by God, and we ourselves were created by God, made in His image and likeness. One would think that between creation and human beings, it would be obvious how good God is, that that God is both an artist and an engineer. And yet human beings have, throughout history, invented strange ideas of who God is and who we are and what we were made for. And so God told the prophets about himself. He revealed himself to Abraham, who made a covenant with him, and he prepared for something greater. He prepared to come to visit his people in the flesh, to reveal his very face to us by the word becoming a human being by the only begotten Son of the Father, the second person of the Holy Trinity, being born in time. And that time was 2,023 years ago, when the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a virgin, betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this greeting and wondered in her heart what it meant. The angel said, Most blessed are you among women. Behold, you found favor with God. The Lord God will, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And she said, How can this be? I, because I have no relations with a man. And the angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. So Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to your word. Now, the man she was betrothed to was a man named Joseph, and when he discovered that she was with child, he decided to divorce her quietly, since he was a righteous man but didn't want to put her to shame. But then he had a dream, and in that dream an angel appeared to him and said, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take Mary into your home, for the child that is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and you should name him Jesus. And so when Joseph awoke, he took his wife into his home. Then a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled, and being from the house of David, Joseph had to return to his hometown, which was Bethlehem in Judea. And so... um, While they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to a son. And they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Now there were shepherds keeping watch in their flocks that that by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And he said, Behold, I bring you great tidings of joy, for to you, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And behold, a great, then a great multitude of heavenly hosts appeared, singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. So the shepherds went in haste to find this sign. And when they found him, they did him homage. And then they went out and proclaimed to everyone what they had seen. At that time then, Wise men appeared from the east. They said, Behold, we've seen his star at its rising, and we have come to worship this newborn king of the Jews. And then Herod and the the king of the Jewish people were greatly troubled by this word. They wondered what what this who this newborn king would be. So after consulting the scriptures, they told them that he'll be born in Bethlehem of Judah. And the wise men followed the star to the place where the child was. And on coming in, they saw the child with his mother and they presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
And then having been warned in a dream about Herod, they returned to their country by a different way. They presented this child with gifts because he himself is the gift, the greatest gift that the Father has given to the world, a gift to humanity and a gift to each of us. And so we continue this tradition of giving gifts to one another. We give gifts also, of course, to the Christ child, right? You got a gift for baby Jesus on his birthday, right? You wouldn't have forgotten the birthday boy. How awkward that would that be to show up at a birthday party and have gotten gifts for everyone but the birthday boy? The good news is that the gift that Jesus most wants for Christmas is not something you can buy in a store. It's not even something handmade. It's not even peace on earth. The gift that the Christ child most wants is you. And so by dressing yourselves up nicely for Christmas, you are presenting yourself as a gift. You've wrapped yourself and brought yourself here to present yourself to Jesus as a gift. All he wants for Christmas is you, and that's the gift that you have given him here on this Christmas day. Some of us don't think of ourselves as gifts. We might be afraid that Jesus will unwrap us and be like, oh, I got her. <laughs> Not everybody is a great gift giver, right? Sometimes we have the experience of receiving a gift and it's not something we would ever want or would ever use. That happened to me once. My mom gave me the gift of an electric kettle. And when I opened it, I, I, I tried to look happy. But I had a nice teapot that I put on my stove, and I, I used that to boil water, and I really didn't think I needed an electric kettle. And then I tried it, and it was amazing. It turned out to be boil water way faster than my stovetop teapot, I started using it every day. Now I use it to make coffee and Father George used it to make tea. And even though the lid kind of snapped off, you can still sort of lift it off and put it back on. It still works fine. Seven or eight years later, I'm still using this gift multiple times a day. It turned out to be the perfect gift, the gift I didn't know I needed. Well, for many of us, the gift of the Christ child at Christmas is not what we were, were looking for. Maybe we wanted a bicycle or a video game. Maybe we wanted um, peace on earth or a cure for cancer or a little bit of help with this or that situation in our life. And instead, we unwrapped the gift from God and it was the baby Jesus yet again. Where would I find room for him in my life? If I were to bring Jesus home with me, I might have to rearrange some things. I might have to get rid of some things in my life that he wouldn't be proud of. I might have to focus my life on some other things besides myself. Best to leave him under the tree, we think, and we wonder, when is God going to give me what I really want? But what we don't realize is the gift of the baby Jesus may not be what we think we want, but it's the answer to all our prayers. We pray for the gift of peace. We pray for the gift of joy, and here he is. We pray for true love, and here he is, waiting for you. We pray for guidance. What, can, what do I do in this situation? How do I be a good, a good man, a good husband, a good father, a good brother, a good grandfather? How do I deal with my job situation or retirement, or what am I going to do with my life? And he's come to meet you. And he's come to walk with you. Jesus is given to us to be Emmanuel, God with us. We thought he was going to give us an answer, but he himself is the answer. But too many of us will leave the gift under the tree because we think it's not what I wanted. The reality is that it's what we most need. So Jesus' birth 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem in Judea makes absolutely no difference to me if I don't receive him into my heart, if I don't take him home with me. The wise men received him. The shepherds received him. 
and he changed their life. Mary and Joseph received him, and he changed their life. The disciples received him, and he changed their life. His birth makes no difference until we too receive Jesus in our hearts. And then when we do, his birth is the one thing that truly matters. Merry Christmas. The second half of the homily happens just before communion. This is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. The same God who came to, came to dwell in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary has come to rest upon our altar here at Mass today. The same God whom the shepherds adored and the wise men worshipped has come to be here today. And he has come to give himself to you. And, and what he's looking for in return is that you would be willing to give yourself to him as he gives himself completely and totally without holding anything back. He's asking you to be willing to make the same gift of yourself to him. And so if you're Catholic and you're well prepared, come forward and receive sacramental communion, but know that what you're doing when you come forward is giving yourself to Jesus who gives himself to you. You're making a total gift of yourself to Jesus. If you aren't Catholic but still want to make a total gift of yourself to Jesus or aren't able to receive sacramental communion or haven't made your first communion, but you still want to make that gift, well then, please come forward. Just cross your arms to indicate that, and uh, we'd be happy to give you a blessing. If you're not prepared to give yourself completely to Jesus, then don't come forward. There's no shame in that. We're all in different journeys, and we, the Lord will wait for you as long as it takes for you to be ready for him. Because he loves us so much and he's willing to respect your freedom. He gives himself to you, but he only wants you to give yourself to him if you feel ready and prepared to do that. So let's not just open our mouths, uh, open our um, hands or in our stomachs, but let's also open our hearts to receive God, Emmanuel, who wants to be God with me and you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 